Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath and it's time to get into the bite. Wahoo in the boat, baby! I mean, you talk about epic fishing days. Yeah! Nice bulldog right there. be the easiest way to pin rig a ballyhoo ace. Before we get into this though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grab as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, folks, so like I said, we're going over what I believe to be the easiest way to pin rig a ballyhoo is. Lots of times we could shy away from using real baits like ballyhoo because we tend to think, oh, it's overcomplicated. I don't want to deal with it. I don't know how to do it. I'm going to mess it up. Well, I'm here to simplify that process for you and bring it down to earth and show you how to get it done right the first time. Now, granted, more often than not, I am an artificials guy, but periodically fish are just not biting the artificials and you have to bust out the real bait. And that's why we're here to do this right now. So let's not waste much more time. I'm gonna get right into it. And the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make the pin rig. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a pin rig. What we're gonna use is about six to eight feet of 80 pound leader material. This is the leader, it comes on a 50 yard spool. It's from Andy, it's 80 pound clear leader material and it's 0.9 millimeters. Now to go along with that, we need crimps that are 0.9 millimeters. And we're only gonna need one crimp per pin rig. Then we're gonna use an 8.0 hook. These particular hooks that we're using for this application are Mustad 3407DTs. We're gonna need a half ounce sinker and we're gonna need a rubber band. The rubber bands we are going to be using are number 32 black rubber bands. And the last thing we'll need is a piece of wire leader. This is number eight wire leader. It's about an inch and a quarter of it. That's what we're gonna need to make the pin rig. That will be your pin. Saltwater tackle specialist, size number eight wire leader. So to make the pin rig is not real complicated. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to take our crimp and we're going to slide it onto our leader and we're going to take our hook. Now the orientation of the hook is very important. You want it to face away from the crimp to start off with. Then we're going to take our lead we're going to feed that onto so this is the orientation that we have right now. We've got our crimp, our hook facing our lead, and our tag. Now we are going to take our tag in and we're going to feed it back in to the crimp and so this is what we've got. Now we'll put our lead on top and we're going to cinch down on this. Now you want to have a little bit of slack in your line so that your hook can move. If this is too tight, when a fish hits, it's gonna break right here in the crotch point because it'll pull it against the sinker. Now, when you insert this into the ballyhoo, it is not going to be sitting like this. It is going to be sitting more like this. So if it looks like your weight is sticking down out of the ballyhoo's chin for your finished product, that is completely okay because that's what it's supposed to be doing. All right, so we've got a little bit of slack right there, just enough. Now we are going to take the pin and we are going to insert it. This is a double sleeve crimp, so we're gonna insert it right into the middle of the two sleeves and we are going to make it flush. We don't want it sticking out the tag end of it. Now, we are going to take our crimp tool and we are going to crimp it. You have to be careful when you're crimping not to crimp the edges of your crimp because it'll cut your line. And we just squeeze down and there we go. We have a nice crimp with little flares on either sides of our crimp. So this is what our hook is going to be like 
when it is in our valley hoop facing this way. Now what we have to do is we have to take our pin and pretend that we're going to stick it up. So we're going to send it back. We're going to bend it up this way, just like this. Perfect. So here's where we're at. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to trim up our tag. So this is the step that we're going to go over, which makes this easier and quicker than rigging ballyhoo with wire, is using this rubber band. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take it, we're gonna drape it over the pin, and we're gonna take it, and we're basically going to pull a loop. So you take that piece, and pull that there, this is basically a girth hitch. Take it, pull it real tight so it'll sit. There we go. There is your pin rig. All right, so there you have it. That's the pin rig for you. Not real hard, not real complicated. It's a simple apparatus. And the more you make it, the better you will get at doing it, especially the crimping and the inserting the little wire and bending it up. Proper assembly in the order that I showed you is very important and you're gonna see why. So now let's get into rigging the ballyhoo. So the first thing we need to do before we rig the ballyhoo is we need to do ballyhoo prep. So first we're going to remove the eyes. I like to use a dowel rod, you can use a pen or whatever, but the eyes gotta come out. There we go, the eyes are out. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to empty out the stomach contents. So I'll make a little slit here the anal cavity and we are going to push and get as much of that out as we can Okay, now what we are going to do is we are going to release the meat from the spine by pressing down and you'll actually feel it pop. And you just gently work your way down towards the tail and up towards the head. You gotta be careful, you don't want to remove too many scales. And what this will do is this will let it sort of swim freely. So now our ballyhoo is prepped. All right, so now we're ready to do the rigging. We've got our pin rig. You just kind of plant your hook right at the back of his gill and your pin right there. And you can always see and pinch right where you want your hook to come out. So we insert the hook and we start bending our fish over and we will get it to come out right about where we pinched and we planned on it coming out. There we go. Now, the next part we'll do is we are going to insert our pin right in the middle. Now you don't want it coming out through the mouth. You want it coming out through the bone just behind the mouth. And we are going to have that come up straight through the middle. Just like that. Tighten your rubber band. Okay, now what we'll do is we're going to pinch our weight up in there. We are going to wrap the rubber band behind the pin. Then we are going to go in front of the pin and then with our last pull, we are going to pull it over the pin. Now, if it's not tight enough, you can always go behind your pin one more time. And then we will take it, pull it over the pin. And there you have it. Okay, now the last thing that we'll do 
is we'll trim up our pin just a little bit so we don't have too much of it sticking out. And there you go. That's a pin rig ballyhoo. That's the easiest way to do it. Go off the beak. We're good to go. So this is what a properly pin rigged ballyhoo looks like. Your hook is not inserted too far back and it's not so far forward that so much is exposed. The issue with properly inserting your hook is, is if it's too far back, your ballyhoo will curl up and it will start to spin in the water. And if it's too far up, then you'll have too much hook exposed and it won't really, you know, it'll be a detractant to the fish. You can troll this bear just like this and it'll do just fine. Or you can add on, you know, a topical lure. Lots of folks like to troll an Islander on top of it. You can also throw a Boone turbo hammer on top of it. That'll give it a lot of flash. Personally, me, I like to throw on a dolphin colored sea witch. I'll feed my sea witch on here. And bam, that bad boy is ready to go in the water and catch you some big game fish. So after that, the last thing you would do is you would take your final end of your leader and put another 80 pound crimp on it. And there you have it. That's the easiest way to do a pin rig valley hoop. All right, and so there you have it. That's the easiest way I know how to pin rig a belly hoop. It's much easier using the rubber band than tying a wire around its beak to keep it shut. If you're out on the water and you haven't rigged them up yet, you can always rig them fairly quickly once you get used to this process. It'll become second nature to you. You can also reuse this rig. Let's say you catch a fish or you get hit and you want to re-rig one real quick. It's real quick with that rubber band technique. Ballyhoo catch everything from mahi-mahi to sailfish to tuna, king mackerel, false albacore, you name it, you troll it, they will hit it. So you might wanna consider giving this a try if the fish are not getting into the bite with you. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun, hope you enjoyed. And I hope you learned a little bit about what I consider to be the easiest way to pin rig a ballyhoo race. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.